Hi, I'm Rob from Hobsey. I'm here on location at the fantastic Wilder Brewery in Newcastle. I'm actually sat at the bar because it's absolutely rammed. It's the only place I could get, so I've got the, the actual tripods mounted on the, on the bar itself. But yeah, it's a fantastic um, location. Up in the, it's in a big park in Newcastle, in Newcastle. It's actually the former kind of Palace of Arts, which I think was um, uh, built for, I think it was like the, the Exhibition of the North, like many, many years ago. I think for a while it was the, um, it was a tank museum, but yeah, while I'm kind of spent a fair bit of money on this, and it was, it's a fantastic location. This is actually breweries based on site as well. But anyway, first one, as expected, Jake Ed, which is essentially their flagship beer. Has been from the start. And um, while I mean, people probably knew him before, and there's quite a traditional Cascale brewery um, when Dave Stone kind of bought it out and modernised it. This is now their kind of flagship beer. It's a 6.3% ABV IPA. I have started drinking it because I've been trying to find somewhere to sit. So you're going to get an increasingly louder and, no and busier venue over the night, over the video. So yes, so 6.3. As you can see. It's clearly got some darker, kind of more toasty malts, it's, I'd say, a bit of Munich, something like that, but very hazy, kind of burnt orange colour. I had some last night, it's a great beer, but you can't come to Newcastle, especially not Wyland, and not drink some Jake Head. Yeah, you get that kind of slightly more um, kind of ro um, toasted marshmallow, loads of apricot, grapefruit, orange. That kind of thing, quite piney as well, because it's, this was quite an early, um, an early adopter of this kind of style. Really, I think it has got hazy and softer over the years. But you I mean definitely one of those kind of beers that um, would be like. A, quite, I always remember it being quite like torpedo in the early days. But as the beers evolve, it's got a lot more, a um, lot softer, less bitterness. It's a really kind of, it's a really good New England style IPA with that um, extra kind of toasty malt character. Flavour-wise, very similar to the, to the nose. Orange, marmalade, apricot, peach, that kind of thing. Pale stone fruits, a bit of marmalade, a little bit of rye toast or something like that as well. But yeah, it's a cracker. Anyway, see you next one. Right, so next one is, um, uh, I've got a third, I'm gonna move on to the thirds. Get through more beers then. Um, uh, so this is Full Nelson. This collab with Stiberget from Sweden. It's a 5.5% ABV, um, well, I presume Nelson um, Sorbin Hopped Pale Ale. So, I've had this once before at a beer festival recently. Oh, that's mental. Just big old Nelson hit. You can tell it's a very fresh Nelson. I remember um, my friend um, Dominic who works at uh, um, Thornbridge saying, um, when Nelson Sorbin is quite fresh, it gives off a it's like kind of burnt rubber, smoky bacon thing going on. And it does have that kind of no, but yeah, obviously that um, that kind of wine kind of element that um, Nelson is supposedly kind of characteristic of. Yeah, lemon, grapefruit, fresh grapefruit flesh. It smells good. Cheers. Mm, really nice carbonation. That's the first thing that hits me. Oh, it's delightful. When I had it at the festival. I really liked it as well. I was at Brewed in Ellen Leeds. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that white grape thing going on, gooseberry. Fresh grapefruit flesh. It's got that kind of like, that little bitter bite where you get from grapefruit as well. There's a softer, slightly kind of cream soda thing going on towards the back end. Loads of grapefruit once again. Mm. It's that perfect balance between grapefruit and um, and wine, kind of white grapes. But that's absolutely delightful. That's fa that's fantastic. It's just absolutely crushable, kind of 5.5 percent beer, which it shouldn't be. Um, I mean, should be down in too many of these, but this is not going to last me long. Mm. Yeah, that's cracker. So yeah, full Nelson, 5.5 pale ale, lovely. See you next one. Yes, yeah, so the next one I've got is uh, Wyland's um, Macchiato, which is a 6.5% ABV praline coffee porter. Had this uh, yesterday, I showed a can yesterday, had the Imperial version, which is an absolutely incredible beer. Uh, but yeah, this is the regular 6.5. So as you can see, kind of black as night. Yeah, it's delightful. It's, a, it's got a beautiful combination of kind of like a real kind of freshly roasted coffee bean 
and in a, in a, in a, yeah, the chocolate corrali, a like lovely kind of like rich Belgian chocolate, and and that kind of like hazelnut kind of like kick to it. It's absolutely stunning. It's got a rich and soft creamy thing. I love it. I love a Kinder Bueno. So this is um, the adult version. Anyway, cheers. Oh, mm-hmm. oh it's absolutely storming. Beautiful beer. Mm-mm-mm. Love it. Ticks all the boxes for me. I mean, it's 6.5, it's got a nice soft body to it. Did I not complete, did I completely skip the aroma? No, I didn't do that. Yeah, lovely kind of soft, creamy body. Um, condensed milk, um, brown sugar, big time, cinder toffee. Slight kind of burnt edge of that, kind of like dark chocolate covered cinder toffee. A lovely kind of like full roast coffee. As I said, freshly roast. Freshly um, ground coffee beans. Yeah, that kind of it's, a, it's milk chocolate kind of brownie. It's absolutely storming. Love it. Mm-mm-mm. So that's a uh, macchiato, a um, 6.5% ABV. Um, can't stop myself. Praline coffee porter. Stunning. See you in the next one. Next up. We've got a beer called 6.8 Comeback Special. So dedicating this to my good friend um, Jake. You'll know what the references, mate. <laughs> um, so it's a orange, it's a grapefruit and orange zest IPA. 6.8, obviously. There you go. Pale haze, as you expect. Not kind of like uber murky, but you mean it's definitely on the, it's definitely haze for days. Um, pale golden beer, but aroma. Ooh. Yeah, that kind of zest really leaps out. It's got a real kind of zip to it. You get a fresh vibrancy. And it's what you expect, it's, it's citrus zest. It's so inviting. I don't think there's much more to it. There's maybe a pale malt character like water biscuits at the back end. And that's the coffee machine. As I am sat on the bar. Now I can smell coffee now. <laughs> But yeah, it's a really lovely, vibrant, citric kick. I don't choose fucking dogs. There's like 19 dogs in here. Oh, yeah. The, the heart of it is a real kind of lovely strip back. But, but I mean, in kind of like a really light kind of like character in that sense. Like the, um, very little malt presence in comparison to something like J.K. Mm. When it goes near your lips, it's oh, even before you get it in your mouth, you're getting that kind of like kick from the, from the citrus, and it does have that lemon lime. I, if you give me it blind, I'd like to go to lemon and lime, orange, grapefruit. It's really good. I'm looking over there, see if we got any cans. It's edging towards bitterness. It's kind of like orange pith, orange peel. Great fruit flesh. It's really good. Stupidly drinkable 6.8. Someone's gonna get in trouble. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, that's lovely. And just that, it's such a lovely kind of zippy vibrancy. And it's not something I know that well and I've done before, and it, but it's really damn good. Um, yeah, so that is 6.8 comeback special. Orange and uh, orange and grapefruit zest, lovely. See you in the next one. So next one we've got um, Dan's de Coco, which is 6.9% ABV, coconut uh, IPA. It's one of my favourites from 2019. This one, um, also with Sabro. And so Sabro, and I love Sabro. I think for me, I get a lot of um, um, coconut and, um, uh, and fresh basil from um, this but you I mean as far as the appearance goes it's that kind of like pale golden beer bit of haze to it um, pure white foam so around this is where it all comes alive oh, come on now for me I get more sabro on the nose it's that kind of slightly kind of it's very herbaceous note slight kind of um, bubble gum edge oh, it's good grapefruit 
Pineapple. Anyway, let's go for it. Choose. Mm. Big Sabro kick. I get, personally, I get the Sabro more than I get the coconut. I guess they're going for something which is got pina colada like, but I love coconut. I love Sabro. But this is big old Sabro kick going on. I said bubblegum, pineapple, freshly, uh, fresh basil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But at the heart of it is a fantastic IPA as well. I think you could probably trace the steps close to JK because it has got a bit more of a, um, a toasted malt edge to it as well. And plus, like the film Full Nelson, which was super stripped back, super pale malt. This has got a little bit more malt character. Mm -mm -mm. But I love coconut, I love Sabro. Mm. So, yeah, Downs to Coco, 6.9. Coconut IPA, lovely. See you in the next one. This one is um, same shit every day, C H I T. <laughs> a different day, which is a. Um, I feel like with Lerv as it happens, so it's, a, a, it's an IPA, 7.4. And so, yeah, yeah once again, you, there's a, you, you've seen a, a, a trend developing. It's not kind of like mega murky, but it's got, it's haze for days. Um, pure white from the top, lovely tight pack down head. Mm. Wow, that's a funny one. That really, the aroma, that really reminds me of walking into a Chinese supermarket. It's kind of lemongrass and cardamom. That's really bizarre. Maybe ginger even. I don't think it's, I don't think it's got anything kind of weird going on it, but it's a peculiar aroma. But yeah, talking about Chinese supermarket, it's very spicy, I guess, in that sense. Anyway, cheers. See where, see where this takes us. I mean, those kind of things still knock around in the flavour. But I think at the heart of it, yeah, it's edging down that kind of more musty, uh, more savoury kind of like direction. Very drinkable. Yeah, more on the kind of like the, the kind of dank side. I think it's nice to have a bit of variety. I know I, I know I like the juice and and um, those kind of more kind of like fruity flavours. This is definitely going in more of a dank, savoury direction. Yeah. More of the kind of grapefruit side of things as well, but yeah, dank, resinous. Yeah, it's good, it's good for what it is. I said it's not my kind of preferred type of thing, but you can hear me over the coffee machine. Um, it's good, it's good, it's just not my preferred kind of hot profile. But it is still very good. Yeah, so that's same, shall we say same shit? That's what it's C H I T. Yeah. <laughs> same shit, different day. IPA collaboration with Blurvig. Yeah, good. It's nice and variety. That's what I love about IPA. If they're all the same, it'd be boring. You need stuff to break it up. Even though when you're just primarily drinking IPA all afternoon. See you in a minute. So, final beer of my afternoon here at Wylam in Newcastle is an uh, percent double IPA called Welcome to My World. Is that like a Val Dunican song or something? Maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> but um, as you can see, it's that kind of like, once again, that kind of like pale tarnish gold, um, pure white foam on top. Collaboration with a brewery called Hop Hooligans, which um, if I'm looking at around online, is a, um, a Romanian brewery. So, I don't, I've never heard of them but um, many Romanian craft beer it's good that it's getting out there anyway so aroma wise oh hello oh yeah yeah it's, it's kind of it's dank and earthy but with a big grapefruit nose big dank resinous kind of grapefruit mmm it's not that prominent, oddly, the aroma. It's only slightly smoky. How can I just smell someone's roast dinner? I don't know. Anyway, let's dive in. Cheers. It's been a fun afternoon here at New at Wylam. One of my favourite breweries. And you I mean, 
the beers is definitely going to be absolutely stunning as well. Mm. Personally, I just want to drink um, full Nelson and um, macchiato all afternoon until, until I fall off the stool. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think the flavour follows through as well. I think um, grapefruit, absolutely. Um, it's like, it's dank. It's slightly savoury. Uh, I, I noticed my friend um, Kat had put something about it. It's dry. Uh, it's hoppy to the point of dryness, and it kind of is in a way. Yeah. Oh, it's not sweet. It's very balanced. That's a that's a great thing. Very drinkable for this ABV as well. <laughs> yeah. First flavours go. Yeah, maybe a bit of gooseberry. Flat leaf parsley. So it's got that earthy note, but it's slightly herbaceous. Yeah, grapefruit. And it's got that dank kind of like. If it's not got Simcoe or Mosaic in it, I'd be very surprised. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's not going to knock around very long either. But yeah, fantastic afternoon here at Wild. Big thanks to the hospitality and the allowing me to like stick my, <laughs> my tripod on the end of the bar here on a very busy Sunday afternoon. It's been a lot of fun. I had to do this. I had to do it. It's one of my, as, as, as a northern beer drinker, I know they're a bit more north than I am, which is, it's okay. I'm southern to them, I guess. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's been great. I mean, and the one of the shining stars of the UK craft beer scene, and this afternoon has proved once again that that's why they're so highly regarded because the beer is absolutely stunning. We should have a bit more. Oh, when I walked in, they had they had a bit. Of, I think they had some cask um, macchiato on it. I love that. But yeah, yeah, cask keg. I'm gonna probably buy a can for the train home as well. But um, yeah, it's wild. It's ace. Until next time, I'm Rob from Hobbsine. Cheers.